welcome abnormal investigations got another encounter for you and I think y'all are going to really enjoy this one um, I want to thank everybody for the support that you've given um, it means a lot to us and the support that you all continue to give um, Saturday night should uh, be a pretty good live I hope to see you all there uh, this is now Friday seems like this week has flew by but it was an active week, but I must say it was a week with some very, very good news, so we're very excited, and we are moving forward with a lot of things, thanks to you guys also. Now, this encounter, guys, is, uh, well, at the end, I'll just ask you the question, I guess, so stay tuned for the end, and I have some questions. Listen to me when I say, I am not easily scared of anything. I've practiced the craft since middle school encountered many spirits and played with the Ouija boards many times. I am also Native American with ancestry from both my mother and father. I've heard many stories and legends and I've been in northern Michigan for most of my life. I know the wildlife and I'm very familiar with the dogman tale. I also lived in Flint, Michigan for some time where I witnessed and heard horrible things. That's why I returned to northern Michigan. I would rather see and handle the critters. That being said, I've lived on my own since I was 17. Before that, I had been out of my home a few times as well, but officially had my own home at 17. I am comfortable being alone. In fact, I enjoy the solitude of the mornings in my home. I used to live downtown, but for personal reasons I won't share my location. However, I recently moved out in the country and found a cute house to call home. I thought I would love it just as much, but boy was I wrong. I am living with my boyfriend now, and we both work nights. Usually he's home with me, but sometimes our schedules differ, and for one of us is left home alone at night. The first encounter happened to him right next to our driveway is a thick forest that runs back and forth along the house. It is pitch black as soon as the sun sets. He was outside at our car grabbing a few groceries while I was already in bed. We have known each other for years and have had unusual connections, so when something is wrong, I feel it physically. That night I woke up from a horrible night terror. I dreamed he was being ripped to shreds by something unseen in the woods next in to our house. I asked if he was okay. He was okay. He looked like he had saw a ghost. He stared at me for a moment before answering. I could tell he was really scared. He had heard something behind him from the sound of things. in the thick forest. He described it as a horrible bone cracking sound, similar to the noise from the grudge movie. At first I laughed because of the description, but he insisted it was true. And I could tell by his expression that he was shaken up by the experience. With the limited resources we had since we had just moved in, I did what I could to make him feel better. For a few nights, things were quiet. About a week later, we stepped outside to smoke. A nasty habit, I know. But as I mentioned, the forest around us was very thick. We have a garage, and from around the corner stands a large pine tree. I had my back towards the woods when I noticed him looking past me into the thick darkness. I turned slowly and immediately saw what was standing there. There were eyes. They were so high up, yet far enough that I could possibly be something on the tree branch. My first instinct was to think that it was a raccoon, but that wasn't possible. If you're familiar with deer, then you'll know that their eyes reflect light. However, bucks reflect a red tint due to testosterone, and that's exactly what was staring at us. Now listen. My boyfriend is six foot three, and he was looking up to see these eyes. My ears begin to ring as they do when I am around the supernatural. That night my ears sounded like a school bell. 
It was unnerving. How I still stood and watched, I don't know. Sleep did not come easily that night. Now, it seems that every time the sun sets, my ears ring, and I feel like I'm being watched. It's as if I could open the curtain, and someone will be right there. I am unsure what it is. I have an idea, but I refuse to accept it without solid proof. Fast forward. I've waited to add more until more has happened. Yesterday our neighbors, a sweet lady, came down asking if we had seen one of her dogs. She has two pit bulls that live outside and her youngest one disappeared. The puppy used to greet us in the driveway as he was an escape artist. So when I heard the news, I can't say I was surprised. Later that evening while I was working, my phone began blowing up. She was sending voice memos on Facebook crying about finding her puppy. She had found him about 200 feet back in the woods by the dog kennel, ripped to shreds. My heart sank. I didn't know how to console her. We invited her over for breakfast the next day so she wouldn't be alone. Her husband is deployed right now. She brought her other dog, and my cats enjoyed the company. However, the dog sat at our slider door just staring out. What I initially assumed was morning turned out to be an honest mistake. That night, we were woken up by heavy breathing, as if something had run for miles. There was an awful smell, accompanied by grunts at our window. The curtain was closed, and I refused to look. So we lay there for what felt like forever, just looking at one another and listening when morning came. I checked outside and found no footprints. I am currently home alone as I write this. If anything else occurs, I will update you guys. I don't understand what is going on here. What have I done wrong, and what can I do to get this to stop? Well, uh, first of all, you made a mistake by playing with the Ouija board. Um, you may have caused an attachment or a spirit to come into your house. And I believe that these creatures are connected to those fallen spirits, which I believe to be the Nephilim. And if you by chance open that Ouija board up, you could have connected to one of them that brought it to your house. Um, first thing I would do is um, get rid of the Ouija board and anything of that nature. Ask God to forgive you, pray, and uh, pray over your house and bless your house and your property and your land. If you don't feel that you're able to do that, then uh, find a preacher or somebody to do that for you. Uh, you can put up oil over your windows and your doors and at the four corners of your property. Also, um, again, lights and cameras are really good for keeping things at bay. But um, that would just be some of my recommendations to you. But it sounds to me like this creature probably didn't seek you out. You probably summoned it in by your activities on the Ouija board. We, uh, I, I know a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about the Ouija board, but I think most everybody agrees that they are bad. And they will cause bad things to come. So I would be rebuking that. And uh, that's where I would start. Um, I appreciate you all sharing your story. I hope you get rid of this. And uh, let me know soon what's going on. I'm interested to find out. But again, thank you so very much for sharing your encounter. And to my, uh, to my followers, my subscribers, guys. We could not be doing this without you guys. Our channel is growing right now really fast. Thank you so very much. Share this out to your friends, to your Facebook. Let other people see it. Let's continue to grow. Let's continue to do boots on the ground. Let's make some trips. And um, I'd like to take you all to some places. And as long as we grow and I'm able to get the funds to do that, then we will continue our trip as boots on the ground and do some more investigations. I enjoy doing that with you guys. I hope you guys enjoy that with me also. And I look forward to doing a whole lot of that with you guys. Guys, your help has been so beneficial. Thank you so very much for what you're doing and for the gifts in the mail. You guys rock. You're awesome. And God bless each and every one of you. Even for just watching and hitting the like button, guys. It helps so much. And until next time, guys. Keep your head on a swivel. Don't be something's dinner. And thanks for listening to Oklahoma's number one cryptid channel. We'll see you on the next one.